so hi everyone. My name is Paulina, and today I would like to introduce you architecture components. Okay, so uh, one word about me. Uh, as I said, my name is Paulina. I came here uh, from Wrocław uh, in Poland, where I work as an Android developer at Droids and Rates company. And uh, I'm also the uh, co-organizer of Toast Wrocław Meetup, that meetup for uh, Android developers. And I'm also leading uh, the GDG Wrocław and Women Techmakers program. Uh, you can find me at Medium, at GitHub, at Twitter, and in many other places, probably. Okay, so what we'll talk about today. So, basically, we'll start with introduction to architecture components. What are architecture components? Lately, I will uh, briefly just discuss the room, and uh, later, lifecycle aware components like uh, view model, live data, and lifecycle components. Uh, if I will uh, have enough time, I will try to uh, show the simple application architecture, but we'll see. Okay, so what are architecture components? So uh, on a Google I.O. event in May 2017, there were announced a set of libraries called uh, architecture components, and in this set of libraries, there were announced uh, smallest libraries like Room, a library for uh, data persistence, uh, lifecycle components for handling lifecycle of UI, uh, live data, which is uh, basic lifecycle aware data holder, a view model for storing our data for uh, activity or fragment, and paging library for pagination with recycler view. So that was uh, in May 2017. Uh, at today, at this year, Google I.O., there were announced two more components like navigation components for handling navigation and work manager for handling uh, background jobs. Okay, we'll start with Room firstly. So Room basically creates abstraction layer over a SQLite and uh, so we can use database in a very easy way. Uh, in Room we have uh, three main components like entity, DAO and database. Uh, which are for storing data and accessing this data. Okay, so we may ask ourselves a question, why another database library? Yeah, because we have uh, many solutions like native SQLite or, uh, or Ormlite or any other uh, databases like Realm. Uh, so why another one? Uh, so firstly, Room is cool because uh, we have barely no boilerplate code, yes? We don't need to write uh, the SQL statements on our own, we just use the proper annotations. Uh, the second cool thing is that our SQL statements are validated during compile time, not a runtime, so there will be no uh, runtime exception caused by some SQL typo. Uh, the third thing is that there is full compatibility with live data and Rx Java, which is cool, and Room is just easy to use, test, and to migrate. Okay, so how to use it? Uh, basically, we need to start uh, with entity, and to create entity from a simple uh, data class, we need to add just two things. The first one is a entity annotation, and the second one is primary key, and that's all that you need to do to create entity. Uh, to get uh, to access entity, we need to create a data access object, DAO, and for creating uh, DAO, we just need to use the DAO annotation, that's obvious. And uh, in DAO, we can have many uh, methods for inserting, updating, deleting, and so on, and of course, for querying our data. And uh, one thing about querying uh, cool is that uh, we can eject SQLite called into Android Studio, so we can just uh, see the syntax suggestions and so on, so it's pretty cool. And of course, we can use some SQL uh, uh, syntax for accessing data with parameters and so on. Okay, now we have entity, we have uh, DAO, we need to bind this everything together and to use it, uh, to make it work, we need to use database class. So to create database class, uh, of course, we need to use a database annotation. Uh, second thing is that we need to extend over ROM database class, and we need to have at least one method that, was, uh, that is returning a DAO object. Thanks to this, we can use the database builder for creating our database class. And 
Uh, after this, we can just easily use ROM, for example, uh, for inserting or uh, accessing our data. Okay, so testing. How, how does it look like? So testing is pretty easy with ROM uh, because of the uh, in-memory database, in database builder. And thanks to this builder, we have just database that is uh, the same as our original production database, but it's just uh, in a separation. Yeah, so we don't need to worry about the data in our production database. We can just make some inserts, uh, deletes, and so on, uh, and test them. So the example test can look like this. So for example, we can just insert some data. Uh, then we can just select them from the database and check if they're equal. So to summarize the room, uh, room is cool because there is no, almost no boilerplate code. As you saw, the only SQL statement I need to wrote is uh, just the, the select statement. Uh, the SQL statements are compiled during uh, are validated during compile time, not a runtime. Uh, there is uh, compatibility, which I will show a little bit later, and Room is easy to use, test, and migrate. Uh, if you would like to hear more about Room, there is a presentation tomorrow by Magda, so I encourage you to check this. Okay, now it's time for uh, lifecycle aware components. So as a developers, we know that uh, handling life cycle of uh, UI of activity is uh, pretty painful. Yeah, so we need to remember about uh, registering and registering, you know, start and stop, and uh, about uh, activity recreated uh, caused by orientation changes. Yeah, and uh, if we are pretty unlucky, we also know this schema on the right uh, called also a long cycle, and uh, we know that this is not something that we'd like to uh, handle. So uh, that's why lifecycle work components were made for. So basically, we have two components. Uh, we have lifecycle owner, which is basically anything that has a lifecycle, like activity or fragment, uh, or yeah, anything based on this, like a compact activity and so on. And on the other side, we have lifecycle observer, which is uh, basically anything that is interested in observing lifecycle changes. And uh, lifecycle owner can be in a four different states. So initialized, created, started, resumed, and destroyed. And between those states, uh, he can emit uh, events. And lifecycle observer can subscribe to observing those changes, so we'll be notified every time there is a change in a lifecycle. And uh, this is an example from a code. So uh, Let's imagine that we have some activity, and in this activity, we like to have some kind of location manager or something. So uh, we need to write a lot of the code, yeah, for registering and registering, and this is the part that we are really interested in, yeah, so the, the location changes. To get rid of this boilerplate code, uh, we can transfer uh, our location manager into a lifecycle observer. So what we need to do is that we need to pass somehow a lifecycle owner, which is uh, an activity, for example. Uh, we can add ourselves as an observer to the lifecycle uh, of this lifecycle owner. And thanks to this, uh, we, can, uh, we can use annotations to subscribe to observing changes in a lifecycle. So for example, we can just say that on start, we'd like to invoke this method and on stop something different. Thanks to this, code of our activity will change from this into this. So, yeah, uh, as you can see, uh, in activity there are left only things that we are really interested in. And uh, that's what uh, Git Boyer, one of the creators of architecture components, says about this. Uh, so, it's really that location manager uh, is interested in observing lifecycle state, so it should be able to do it without the activity babysitting itself. Okay, now something different, uh, view model. So let's assume we have some activity and we need to, uh, because we don't wanna store the data in the activity, we're good developers, so we need to uh, have some external data source. It can be, for example, a presenter in MVP approach uh, or view model in a MVVM approach. So basically we have some external data source. But uh, unfortunately, uh, after uh, rotation, 
the activity is recreated. And this data source should be or could be destroyed with this. And in place of this uh, data source, they will create it a new one. So the question is that uh, what should happen or what could happen with this data that will be stored in a data source? Yeah? If we we'll destroy this, when activity is destroyed, uh, we will lose all the data and we'll probably need to make some uh, second call to API or database or anything. And uh, yeah, that's a waste of uh, resources. So that's why Vmodel uh, was created for. So Vmodel is basically a source of data for our activity or fragment that is uh, independent from the activity. So it has its own life cycle. And thanks to this, after activity is recreated, uh, we still have the same view model and we, need to, uh, we don't need to worry about this data. So at first, we don't need to worry about this UI data source uh, itself. So we, need to, we don't need to worry about creating, uh, destroying, uh, finishing. Yeah, we don't need to worry about uh, memory leaks and something like this. Uh, second, the data will wait for us. So for example, if we make some call to API and uh, the result will uh, be back before the activity will uh, start, uh, before the activity will be recreated, then we will know for sure that the data will be wait for us uh, in a view model and we can use it after activity is recreated. And the data will be always updated uh, even after activity recreated, as I said. Okay, so let's look at the code. To create view model, we just need to extend view model class and that's pretty all. Uh, now we can store some data in this view model class, for example, a list of the strings. And we can, uh, of course, have uh, some, uh, we can have context of the application in a view model if we would like to. We can just uh, extend the Android view model class. Yeah, and to use a view model in activity, we need to use the view model providers class. And that's where the magic happen under the hood. So we don't need to uh, create this view model on our own and we don't need to uh, handle its life cycle. It will be done uh, by the library. So thanks to this, we can just get some data that we uh, stored previously in a view model and we can show this, for example, on a UI. Okay, live data. So live data is basically a life cycle aware data. So uh, let's take an uh, example uh, of the list of the string. So uh, we can just wrap this list of the string into live data. And thanks to this, uh, our activity can observe changes uh, that were emitted in this list. And we can uh, notify every time there is uh, some, some change in this event. And uh, it's pretty cool because all of this is lifecycle aware. So uh, all of this happen only if activity is at least started. So we are sure that if activity is stopped, then uh, we will not be notified about new data. And uh, now the code. So uh, to use live data, we'll just use the uh, example from a previous screen. We will just simply wrap list of the string into this live data. This is mutable live data. It's uh, just mutable version of live data because we want to change uh, these values inside of the vmodel class, but we'd like to expose just uh, live data to not allow anyone to, uh, to change these values. And now, for example, we can just uh, subscribe to some changes from API, for example, from some external repository. And uh, whenever new data comes, we will, just, uh, we will just post this value on the UI. And uh, to use it in activity, we'll just make a small change. So now instead of showing, instead of getting the data every time we'd like to show something on UI, we will subscribe to observing those changes. And whenever something new comes, we will just show this on a UI. So as you can see, it's simply observer pattern, but with lifecycle awareness. Uh, sometimes there is a need to transform our data in a view model. We can use transformations to do this. So for example, we have list of user, but we'd like to expose only the names of the user. So we can use just uh, simply transformations map and we can just create new live data based on the old live data. 
Okay, now uh, live data with data binding. Uh, so let's assume we have data binding in our project, and uh, data binding allows us to bind the UI components in the layouts to the data sources. Yes, so we can use the data source and we can set the data directly in the XML instead of setting this uh, in an activity, for example. So uh, as a data source, we can use our view model. Uh, and for example, when we want to set, uh, set some view, we can use just the data from the view model class. This is how view model looks like. So uh, as you can see, we have some observable fields. These are from the data binding library. And we need to notify that every time something new comes, we'd like to set this value. But what if we put the application into the background and the result from repository will come after this? So uh, unfortunately, data binding is not life cycle aware, uh, but like data is. So uh, there is a support for data binding with like data, and we could just simply change uh, observable fields into like data. And thanks to this, uh, we are able to do the same thing as with data binding library, but it will be all lifecycle aware. Uh, in the activity, uh, the change is uh, very small, so we need to just set ourselves as a lifecycle owner uh, to tell that we are uh, to tell that we are lifecycle owners, and that's pretty much all. Okay, as I said, Room has a support for live data and Rx Java. So, for example, if we have some select and we uh, return the value uh, of like data from this select, we have uh, two things for free. So, first one is that uh, we will have the observer pattern. So, whenever something changes under this select, so the list of the cats will change, we'll be notified uh, about this. And the second thing is that we don't need to worry about the threads. So, we can call it from whenever. Uh, thread we want. Okay, so too long didn't read. Like data is cool because it keeps you, our UI always updated because uh, of the observer pattern. And there is, uh, all of this is life cycle aware, so we don't send uh, the data into the activity that is already stopped. Okay, and uh, I have two more minutes, yeah? so. Uh, Okay, I have simply architecture example. Uh, I can just show this very, very briefly. So uh, we can use architecture components uh, in, a, in the simplest way. We can use just MVVM uh, architecture. So in MVVM, we have model view and view model class. Uh, view is, of course, our view like activity fragment. View model is view model as I shown previously. And model is some kind of uh, a repository. Yeah? It can be a, uh, it can be, for example, local repository, like we can use Room, or some remote repository like uh, API, and we can use Retrofit. It doesn't matter, it's just uh, the abstraction uh, layer over some uh, fetching data. And, uh, okay, I will just try to show it. Okay, maybe I will skip the slides. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so. Uh, here we are in an activity, and as you saw, uh, there is a view model created, the, the same as uh, was before, and we uh, need, we can subscribe as, uh, ourselves uh, to observing changes in this list uh, of cuties, for example, and we can just show them on the UI. So, uh, in a common approach is that we have, for example, a master detail view, yeah, and we have. Uh, some kind of list, for example, and whenever we uh, just select something, we'd like to show the details of this thing, yeah? So we need to uh, have some data, we need to fetch this data from some repository, and we need to show these details on the UI. So for example, we can just uh, set simply click listener, and we can tell the model that we'd like to request the details of the kitty. And in our view model, we can just store uh, many live data as we want, and we can just uh, fetch the data from, from, from some repository, and we can just post this value to the UI. So as you see, uh, we have all the data that are needed for our UI stored in uh, one place, in a V model. 
all of this is life cycle aware, so we, didn't, we don't need to worry about checking if activity is, uh, is started or not. And uh, all of this is very easy to test. Yeah, and in our activity, we can just subscribe to observing those changes. Okay, uh, I have uh, also the test uh, example, but I will just um, <laughs> put this uh, on a GitHub repository because I'm out of the time. Uh, so, yeah, these are resources that I used, and uh, thank you. <laughs>